Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Okay, so um, with European-style options, can you get out of the trade before expiration? You can. So uh, assuming that there's a liquid market for a particular option, so uh, you know, we would assume normal market conditions, uh, you can get out of an option. You could buy a put today, and you could sell it tomorrow. Uh, you may be in a profitable position or a negative position. But yes, you could get out of it before expiration. For the sake of using some easy calculations, uh, Randall, I, um, I, I assumed that we held it all the way through expiration. But yeah, you can definitely get out uh, before then. So Bruce, my charting package shows no volume in most of the listed options. How do you expect to trade with no volume or liquidity? Uh, <clears throat> I might defer to Steve on this to get a better answer. But the uh, John, if you look at, yeah, please. If you don't want me. You know, I'm looking at the EUU options that did not trade today, the 134, the April options. And I, I know this is something that people have read. I, guess, I think this is written in books maybe 10, 20 years ago, and people still bring this up, talk about open interest and volume. I'm looking at the April 134 calls and puts. They didn't trade today. The bid ask spread is $0.07 cents wide. Um, I think that is actually very, very, uh, that's a reasonable uh, quote considering the risk reward that you have on an active money option for a couple of weeks, um, I think that um, you really need to look at that. You know, and you can go into different months and see different things. And I just want to take a look at the May 134. Um, they did not trade either, but the bid ask spread there is six cents wide in the puts and seven cents in the calls. So even going out another month, which is going to give you even, as John said, Sometimes you want to give yourself a lot more time than you think you might need. Uh, I don't think those bid-ask spreads are unreasonable at all. So, so Steve, let, let me uh, – uh, so would you say that a fair answer to Bruce's question about volume and liquidity is that volume and liquidity are two different things in the options Absolutely. Market? It really depends on – John, it's a good point. Uh, it depends on the ability for a market maker to actually hedge a certain transaction. It's pretty easy for a market maker to hedge. Uh, their uh, option trade, if they tr trade with one of us in the spot market or the futures market, um, if you're trading um, a very eclectic equity, you might see the bid-ask spreads to be 40, 50, 60 cents wide. And even some ETFs uh, have very, very wide bid-ask spreads because um, the market maker finds it very difficult to hedge. This is a very, very, and John showed you, very straightforward way that most people would hedge this. We might not want to hedge, or we might want to hedge, but it's very, very easy to hedge this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the 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 the, the ability to uh, you know get in and out of a position in in currency options is enhanced because the underlying market, the forex market, is so liquid. So uh, it, it's it's not um, so it, it's it, they're two different things. It's it's tough to draw a comparison to let's say you know trading a uh, the currency itself, uh, which you know has it's it's two different uh, two different things. Let me answer uh, one of these questions we've got here from Don. So, does implied volatility work the same as in the equity markets with equity options? So, the the you know theoretical pricing models that include things like you know implied volatility and and the things that that infers. So, things that we know about uh, you know how does the implied volatility respond in the money and out of the money option strike prices and. Uh, volatility in the underlying, et cetera. And it, it is very analogous to the way that um, how implied volatility works and reacts to the market in the currency options market is very similar to the way it would react or uh, what you would expect to see in with you know, options on ETFs or options on stocks. OK, so. You scroll down here just a little bit. Do you suggest, so Mike's asking, do you suggest buying the in the money or out of the money strikes for option positions? Well, <clears throat> so uh, let, let, me, uh, let me say number one is that it, 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 not only would it be inappropriate for me to make a recommendation, but I, I really shouldn't because it kind of varies on what your trading objectives are. When you can buy out of the money option strikes and 
uh, really the, 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 ta the, the decision is, well, an out-of-the-money strike is going to probably cost me less. But, you know, and we could even look at Delta as kind of a really, really rough estimate of what the market's idea is about this particular option being worth anything by expiration. And so what we know about an out-of-the-money uh, strike price is that, you know, we have the potential for some big percentage gains. But, um, you know, they, they, the prices can go against us very quickly as well. And, you know, hanging on to that position for an extended period of time, we may wind up in a situation where it just becomes worthless uh, through to expiration so very easily. Uh, in, in general, when I'm showing examples and such, I usually look at the at-the-money strike price because you're kind of, uh, giving you, you know you're kind of in uh, uh, what I would think is kind of a sweet spot in the uh, 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 the volatility curve. You know you, you, you're you're uh, not taking on too many disadvantages for the advantages that you're getting, but that's probably a personal preference. I think really aggressive traders they may find a, an out of the money strike uh, really attractive, essentially. Uh, so Keith says sometimes the bid ask is was quite wide and therefore was very difficult for me to to make a profit even though the VIX came down a lot substantially. Uh, so Keith, I, maybe I'm missing part of the context of your uh, question. Uh, I'm not sure about the reference on the VIX. Sorry about that. But, uh, but let, me, uh, uh, let me address the well, one thing I would say is I've been watching the currency options for a while since they were been introduced. And you know, as far as trading activity and, and uh, uh, volume goes, I'm, I'm finding it very promising. And I suspect that regardless of where the you know, NFA comes down on the new margin requirements, that uh, we're going to see, I, I would not be surprised to see a lot more traders who are, have specialized in the Forex beginning to shift their attention over to exchange products, uh, or I mean, from spot Forex, I should say, from spot Forex dealers over to exchange traded products and uh, finding a spot for uh, uh, currency options, which uh, I think is definitely appropriate. So Bruce, when your option gets into the money on a winning trade, spreads 50 cents or more. Also, I've never gotten filled on a spread at anything other than the worst price possible. Uh, Bruce, I, sorry, your question might be a little bit vague for me to answer it specifically. Uh, the, right now I've got, I mean, we can see spreads that are a lot tighter than 50 cents. Um, the uh, you know on on uh, the euro for example I'm seeing you know five or six cents seven cents on on at the money strike prices. The however one one thing I would comment let me comment on that though Bruce, uh, you, you know the spread is part of your trading cost right so there's, you know there's commissions there's spread these kinds of things are trading costs and uh, you know this is one of the reasons why we tend to gravitate towards and advocate uh, positions that are a little bit longer term. They're, they're, it's not that the analysis is all that different compared to a shorter term position. It's that the trading frequency tends to drop. So your potential upside is larger. Your potential downside is larger, too, in absolute dollar terms. But because you're trading less frequently, that, that uh, constant cost is dinging you over and over and over again, whether it be the spread plus commissions or the spread or whatever it is, uh, becomes a, a smaller percentage of the overall trade. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.